Hi, I'm Dr. Sandy Schwartz. I work at UCSD Medical Center. I work in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery, and my area of subspecialty is orthopedic trauma. So I'd like to give you a little bit more information about orthopedic stress fractures. Um, stress fractures can happen uh, pretty much to anybody. Uh, they're very common in athletes in particular. They can occur after a person starts training for any prolonged period of time or for any strenuous activity that they may not be used to. Um, one common example is if people start training for a marathon and if they don't progress their training schedule appropriately. So what can happen is they start out a little too much and too fast and then with time um, they start getting these stress fractures. And basically what a stress fracture is, is that the bone is exposed to uh, too much force or too much stress too quickly and the bone can actually uh, break. Um, there's a couple of different areas of the body that are prone to stress fractures. Um, the common ones in the lower extremities are uh, in the foot. You can get a tibia stress fracture and the tibia is your shin bone. And then one of the worst types of stress fractures to get is what we call a femoral neck stress fracture. Sometimes um, active runners or people who do a lot of prolonged walking can actually end up getting groin pain in the front of their hip. Sometimes it's more in the back of the hip, but it's almost always in the front of the hip. And the way the hip joint basically works is there's a cup called the acetabulum and then the femoral head, which is the round part that sits inside. And right beneath the femoral head is what we call the femoral neck. And the neck or femoral neck is very prone to get stress fractures, and especially in runners. And the primary symptom with that is groin pain. And the groin pain is worse with any activity, including walking. And then with rest, the groin pain actually gets better. So if that's something um, that a runner or a very active athlete who does a lot of impact activities uh, has, uh, groin pain, then that's definitely something we worry about a lot. And we would initially get an x-ray, but almost always, especially in a young active person, order an MRI because that's the best way to diagnose these early. And the earlier that a femoral neck stress fracture is diagnosed, uh, the better for the overall outcome. If we diagnose it early enough, um, usually there's no surgery needed. But if the problem has persisted for a while, um, the stress fracture, which is basically a hairline fracture, can actually go on to completely break through. And then we worry a lot about the femoral head dying because the blood supply to it goes away or the fracture can't heal at all. And that almost always needs surgery. The most common and always the first line of treatment is a uh, basically non-weight bearing. So what that means is unfortunately you have to take all the pressure off the affected bone. So since it's usually in the lower extremity, that would mean being on crutches um, probably for about four to six weeks. For metatarsal stress fractures, uh, we usually treat uh, patients with what's called a walker boot. Even though you can't walk with it, it's removable so you can still shower. Um, the point of that is to mobilize all the joints and keep them nice and still so that while the bone is healing, it's in the proper position. So for metatarsal stress fractures, it's usually uh, the cam boot and crutches. The same holds true for tibia stress fractures. Um, again, it's this boot that basically goes from the toes up to the knee. It's removable, but it helps mobilize the bone so that it doesn't hurt quite as much. But again, the key thing is non-weight bearing. For femoral neck stress fractures, there is actually a bigger variety of treatment. If it's a very early uh, stress fracture, then again, we start with crutches. There's no cast or braces or anything, but crutches for at least six weeks. And then in terms of the location of the stress fracture, if this is the femoral head and this is the shaft and the neck is in between, if it's on the top half, we call that the tension side. And that's a much more dangerous area where the neck can actually go on to break and displace. So if you have a tension-sided femoral neck stress fracture, we usually recommend surgery if it involves over half the width of the femoral neck. Um, if it's on the bottom half of the femoral neck, which is what we call the compression side, because that's where the bone's compressing, those tend to be more stable of stress fractures, and those, again, we can usually treat with just crutches. Again, the crutches are usually for six weeks, and the follow-up for stress fractures is primarily based on pain. So after six weeks, if a patient is completely asymptomatic, there's no pain, no swelling, the bone doesn't hurt when we push on it, we let them start walking again. Um, usually if it's a foot or tibia fracture, we keep the patient in the boot for about four more weeks just to protect their muscles and ligaments so you don't re-sprain anything. Um, for the femoral neck fractures I mentioned, 
we can either try the crutches or if you have surgery, you basically get three screws that get put up uh, across the fracture site that stabilizes it. If the metatarsal stress fracture goes on to not heal, the surgery we do is a screw and it's made through a pretty small incision. We put a screw across and that screw helps to pull the bone edges or the fracture site together. Um, and that helps the fracture heal much faster. If the tibia fracture goes on to not heal, we put a metal rod or intramedullary rod on the inside of the bone. And again, that stabilizes the bone to let the bone uh, be more secure so it can heal better. And then again, for the hip, which is probably the worst case scenario, is when you have um, the three screws that go across the fracture site. So that's kind of a brief overview and summary of stress fractures uh, of the lower extremity primarily. Um, so the biggest important thing to remember is that you have to have uh, suspicion that the stress fracture exists. And then we usually start with an x-ray and most always an MRI and only on few occasions a bone scan. So if anyone is uh, concerned about stress fractures or pain that doesn't get better with uh, just simply rest or pain that keeps returning, we're at UCSD, we're very, uh, we have a very broad group of specialists to take care of you. We have sports medicine specialists, uh, trauma specialists, wide variety of orthopedic surgeons that can help. So uh, we're happy to help if we can. Thank you.